from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I force my yard. This is the river now. This is going to be weeks. Uh, this is a significant uh, impact. I just come from really tough, resilient people, and so we just kind of carry on. Toughness and resiliency. Montanans are showing what they're made of as communities and homes are destroyed by natural disaster. Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Welcome to Montana this morning. I'm Diane Parker. Thanks so much for starting your day with us. Let's go ahead, dive right in. And Miller, I know I understand the Yellowstone and the Stillwater Rivers. They yeah. are both Oof. officially uh, over the flood stage. We're bracing mm. for more devastation, more devastating flooding. What can you tell us? Well, here at uh, in uh, Billings, uh, the Yellowstone and uh, continuing to rise. We're at uh, last check. In fact, I got some uh, numbers here. I'll show you in just a little bit. Uh, flood stage is 13.5 feet. We're at 13.9, expected to rise up to about 14.7 at its peak about lunchtime today. And then we'll slowly start to recede as we get later to this evening uh, tomorrow morning. That's what's projected. Not saying that's going to happen, but you can see a live shot of the Yellowstone right now. It's it's up, folks. And uh, again, if, you, if you're driving this morning and you come across water-covered roads, do not attempt to drive through it. Uh, go around it, find another way. You have no idea what's going on underneath the surface. Could be very, very dangerous. 47 right now at the airport. Winds out of the southwest at about 8 miles an hour. Gust of 25, that's another thing we're going to be dealing with, Diane. Wow. Today and tomorrow, gusts 30 to 50 miles an hour possible in our area. And then on top of that, we could see record heat by the end of the week. So oh a goodness. very, very busy week on the way. And we'll break it all down with the main forecast coming up. Right. And the main main thing is to stay safe like you have there on your side. You got to stay safe. Yeah. Stay safe. Stay tuned to Miller and the forecast and all of us here on Q2 will have the very latest for you. All right, well, in Livingston, the hospital has been forced to evacuate patients as waters begin to flood the campus. Livingston Healthcare is seizing operations for the time being, canceling all morning appointments from 7 to 10. Urgent care is closed until further notice. The rising Yellowstone River is threatening Billings and Laurel, even if the damage seen in other parts of south central Montana hasn't hit yet. The Riverside Park campground in Laurel was evacuated Monday and the city of Laurel has made strides to bulk up the riverbank after the massive oil spill back in 2011. But officials fear it may not be enough to handle these record breaking high waters. I have been out and around the soils are saturated so if we get any more per precipitation we could have some problems with uh, flash flooding and runoff. And if you live near the river, you may want to consider assembling an emergency preparedness kit. It should include a battery powered or hand crank radio, non-perishable food, water, a flashlight, first aid kit, emergency blanket, medications, and copies of your personal documents. All Yellowstone National Park entrances will remain closed this morning. Take a look at this road through the Gardner Canyon. It's in between Gardner and Mammoth Hot Springs. A portion of it, as you can see, completely washed away. Gardner is nearly inaccessible this morning. We saw this home fall into the Yellowstone River. Several Yellowstone employees did live there. Homes were also reported floating down the Stillwater River between Nye and Absorkey. Many other homes were damaged, but we won't know the true scope for quite some time. In Stillwater County, the sheriff says they won't be able to assess damages for some time until the waters subside. Near Nye, the road to the Stillwater mine is completely washed out. 56 miners were stranded and had to be rescued. And at the nearby Woodbine Campground, 68 campers and 16 dogs were trapped by the floodwaters and were rescued by raft. Where we're seeing whole trees being swept underneath the bridge. My vehicle is in line with about two dozen other vehicles and campers and RVs there. The Montana National Guard sent out two helicopters to aid in the rescue of flood evacuees in Roscoe and Cook City. And more surreal video for you. This is the Tom Miner Bridge just downstream from Gardner being swept away. Now, just outside the northeast corner of the park in Silvergate, numerous homes and businesses were also flooded. Many residents of the community are currently stranded. We were also allowed onto this family homestead in north, north of Absorkey. And as you can see, it is completely underwater. The land has belonged to the Wilcox family since the 1800s. And they say they've only seen flooding once before, and it wasn't even close to this. The Wilcoxes were able to make it out safely, but leave some memories behind. It's a terrible feeling to lose 
everything, but we're okay. I mean, I'm okay in a wall tent, so I mean, I'm fine. I'll be fine. Lives are irreplaceable. Pictures, clothes, it doesn't matter. It's the lives that matters. The Stillwater County Sheriff's Office has issued a boil notice for people in flood affected areas. And take a look at Red Lodge. Rock Creek spilled its banks and began pouring into town. Dozens of homes and businesses were destroyed or suffered extensive damage. Governor Gianforte tells us a disaster declaration is forthcoming. Q2's Casey Conlin brings us the very latest. This is the scene in Red Lodge. I'm on the corner of Broadway and 19th. There used to be a bridge right here running over Rock Creek. Now Rock Creek has completely overtaken it, washed it out as water continues to flow down Broadway into these buildings. It's just some of the massive damage it's already caused. And officials say, unfortunately, this may just be the beginning. This is gonna be weeks. Uh, this is a significant uh, impact. The East Side Road Bridge just north of Rock Creek Resort was the first to fail Sunday night, but Red Lodge Fire Chief Tom Kuhn says that was just the beginning. Shortly we lost the uh, 19th Street Bridge, uh, then we lost the 9th Street Bridge. Chain of events began to happen so quickly it was difficult to keep up with. In all, seven bridges were damaged or completely destroyed in the area by Monday morning. This is one of the few that survived mostly intact but remained impassable. They have not seen the creek get this high in their memory, and they've lived here all of their life. Um, so it's definitely a historic event. And that's bringing out the looky-loos, which is causing disaster personnel all kinds of headaches. Our biggest message now is to please, please stay away from these waterways. Things are changing so rapidly. The bank could just drop away underneath you. Yeah, check back with us either at this number. An early command center is set up at the Carbon County Personal Services Building. Hundreds of homes and businesses have flood damage, but there are bigger problems now, starting with the town's power supply. The transmission lines, the bank that they're supported by has eroded. One of these poles you can see here fell into the river Monday afternoon, leaving the town almost completely in the dark. This is what the town pump looked like around 3 p.m. and this could last for days. Due to the high stream flows, uh, Northwestern Energy is not sure what their ability will be to, to fix or replace that power line anytime soon. In Red Lodge, Casey Common, MTN News. Many residents are waking up at an evacuation center at the Carbon County Fairgrounds. They're being taken care of by the Red Cross, offering water, food, and shelter. People from all over are volunteering. A couple from Minnesota even spent their Monday making sandbags and helping out in any way that they could. We got enrolled in this morning and found out that um, things were happening. And in Minnesota, we're used to sandbagging. You know, we do it all the time. And sometimes people come from all over to help us. So. Thought we might as well find out where the action is. With so many road closures in the area, many people don't know when they'll be able to return home and assess the damage. Carbon Alert on Facebook is updating those closures regularly and has a full list on their page. And we will continue to follow and update you with the very latest information on flooding. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says the battle over the Donbas region will be one of the most brutal in European history. Moscow-backed forces have occupied parts of the region since 2014. Ukrainian military officials say their troops have been pushed out of a key city in the east and are in desperate need of additional military aid. The FDA begins two days of meetings to discuss certain COVID-19 vaccines from Moderna and Pfizer. Today, the agency will vote on whether to recommend if children 6 to 17 years old can get the Moderna shot. And tomorrow, the FDA will consider recommending both companies shots for children between 6 months and 5 years old. That is the only group of Americans still unable to get the COVID-19 vaccine. And while we're dealing with flooding here in Montana, a wildfire is forcing hundreds of people to evacuate their homes near Flagstaff, Arizona. Thousands of acres have burned since it began on Sunday morning. Authorities arrested 57-year-old Matthew Reiser for starting the fire. According to court documents, he told investigators he lit toilet paper. The House Select Panel investigating the January 6th insurrection spent day two of testimony trying to show Donald Trump embraced conspiracy theories. Now the former president is calling the committee a kangaroo court meant to distract Americans. CBS's Naomi Ruckham has more. 
talk about the On day claims. two of the historic hearings, the House Select Committee worked to unravel former President Trump's false claims of winning the 2020 election. Donald Trump lost an election and knew he lost an election and as a result of his loss, decided to wage an attack on our democracy. The panel of seven Democrats and two Republicans investigating the January 6th Capitol attack played clips of Mr. Trump's unsubstantiated claims before and after Election Day. The only way we're going to lose this election is if the election is rigged. You can press a button for Trump and the vote goes to Biden. What kind of a system is this? In a recorded interview, former Attorney General Bill Barr recalled the president showing him a report alleging voting machines were rigged. I thought, boy, if he really believes this stuff, he has, you know, lost contact with, uh, with uh, he, he's become detached from reality. The committee also raised questions about hundreds of millions of dollars Team Trump solicited online after his election defeat. Not only was there the big lie, there was the big ripoff. The committee pointed to millions in donations. It says were funneled not to a legal defense fund, but to the president's Save America PAC, which would spend more than $200,000 on Trump's hotel properties, $1 million to a foundation led by Trump Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, and $5 million to the company that helped organize the January 6th White House ellipse rally that preceded the riot. Naomi Rockham, CBS News. And the committee is expected to hold at least five more hearings. The next is tomorrow at 8 a.m.